good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. A U.S. Army Apache helicopter struck power lines in rural Grant County Friday, forcing the aircraft down and sparking a small wildfire. Diamond Foundry Incorporated committed five workplace safety violations and incurred $12,000 in penalties. The clouds and wet weather will move east tonight, allowing for sunshine and warmer temperatures throughout the week. The crash of a small plane outside Twisp on Sunday left one person dead. The Okanagan County Sheriff's Office says the aircraft's single occupant was found dead in the wreckage not long after the crash was reported about 10.30 a.m. The plane went down in rugged hill country up Finley Canyon about eight miles southeast of Twisp. A local pilot was able to guide search and rescue teams to that crash site. The cause of the crash isn't yet known and the FAA and National Transportation Safety Board are investigating. A U.S. Army AH-64E Apache helicopter struck power lines in rural Grant County Friday, forcing the aircraft down and sparking a small wildfire. Highway 243 was shut down after the incident about 4.40 p.m., which sent the helicopter crew for medical treatment and left power lines across the highway near milepost 18. The brush fire sparked by the collision was brought under control within an hour, the Grant County Sheriff's reported. In a Facebook post, the Army's 16th Combat Aviation Brigade at Joint Base Lewis-McChord said the, quote, aviation mishap occurred during a routine training exercise. The aircraft involved was part of the 4-6 Air Cavalry Squadron. Both pilots were evacuated to Yakima Training Center for evaluation by medical personnel. The incident is under investigation. Investigation. The legal case of a Wenatchee woman seeking to prevent her daughter's return to Saudi Arabia will be heard by the State Court of Appeals at a special hearing set to take place in Wenatchee. The third division of the Court of Appeals normally hears all cases in Spokane, but sometimes visits other cities to hold court. The October 24th hearing will take up the case of Bethany Al-Hadari, who's suing her Saudi ex-husband for custody of her child. Chelan County Judge Kristen Ferreira ruled in 2021 that Saudi custody law could not be enforced in Washington because it does not acknowledge the rights of the mother or women in general. Al Hadari's former husband is appealing that decision. The appellate court meets at Wenatchee High School to hear oral arguments in three cases that day. The hearings will be open to the public. The Eastmont School District is pushing back on a state audit that said the district did not have proper documentation showing it provided equipment to students and staff with unmet needs in 2022. That year, Eastmont spent over $1.2 million on laptops using money from the Emergency Connectivity Fund, or ECF, program, which provides funding to meet the needs of those who lack access to engage in remote learning. The audit says that when the district applied for ECF funds, it provided estimated unmet need for eligible equipment, but to receive reimbursement from the ECF program, the district could only receive funds for laptops actually provided to students and staff, and not for laptops held for future use or for use solely at the school. The district says they were unaware about the requirements and to only request reimbursement for actual unmet need and thought the estimate was sufficient to comply. The auditor's office said they are sympathetic to the challenges faced by the district during the COVID-19 pandemic and will review the status of the finding during their next audit. On Friday, the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries announced that the minimum wage will be increasing to $16.28 in 2024, and the government shutdown was narrowly averted over the weekend in Washington, D.C. Senator Patty Murray responds. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. 
Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. Hi everybody, Dan Coos alongside Jesse Coble from Alpine Air. My heat pump is, there's like steam coming out of it. It's making weird noises. Is this something that I need to be concerned about? No, Dan, that's normal operation. Refrigeration technology steals heat from the outside, transfers it to the inside, and it creates frost on your heat pump. The defrost cycle melts that off, which creates steam and a little bit of noise. That makes sense. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Diamond Foundry Incorporated was found to have committed the five violations and incurred $12,000 in penalties as a result of a Department of Labor and Industries inspection in August. The company manufactures jewelry and diamonds using semiconductor wafer products in the old Stemilk Growers Building on Holly Street. Three serious violations involve failure to have a written energy control program also have program procedures documented in writing and failure to train employees on said program. The other two violations brought on no penalty fees and were listed as non-serious. All violations have been corrected by Diamond Foundry and the $12,000 has been paid. On Friday, the Washington State Department of Labor and Industries announced that minimum wage will be increasing from $15.74 to $16.28 in 2024. Federal minimum wage remains at $7.25 an hour. The state minimum wage applies to all employees age 16 and above. However, state law says employers may pay employees age 14 and 15 85% of minimum wage. The the increase takes effect January 1st. A government shutdown was narrowly averted over the weekend in Washington, D.C. The House and Senate finally passed a continuing budget resolution that will tide the federal government over for the next 45 days. On Saturday, Washington senior Senator Patty Murray, who's also President Pro Tem of the Senate, says there's more work to be done, particularly because the spending bill leaves out funding for the war in Ukraine. There is a lot of work left to do now that we've passed this bill. First, we have to absolutely do more to support our allies in Ukraine. Dictators across the world are watching. Will we stand with democracy? I say yes. The Senate absolutely will stand with our friends in Ukraine as they continue to defend themselves against Putin's brutal invasion. Because continuing to support Ukraine is not just about addressing a humanitarian crisis, it is also about our own national security and what kind of world we want to live in. It is in America's national security interest to send a strong message to dictators like Putin that they cannot just invade a sovereign nation and steamroll democracy wherever and whenever they want. Coming up next, students looking for, career, for a career and educational options have three chances to explore their future in the next month. We'll tell you more in tonight's feature story. Sunny and much warmer weather is coming our way. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. We're turning up the heat with the hottest deals of the year. Right now, during the hot summer clearance sale, only at Click It RV. Number one in sales and service. The best RV brands. Over 1,000 to choose from. And the best deals of the year on remaining 2023 model year-end clearance with incredible 30% off. Brand new RVs discounted up to 30%. Save thousands. Plus, no payments until 2024. During the hot summer clearance sale, now only at Click It RV. Five superstore locations. Hurry in today. As Chelan's premier lifestyle store, Willow, find unique home decor, clothing, jewelry, and more. Come visit for a welcoming and memorable shopping experience. Deepwater Electronics is your one-stop shop for the latest in TV and sound technology. Whether you build your home theater or let them do it for you, Deepwater Electronics is the clear choice. The switch is on to T-Mobile. Get the best 5G experience and the customer service you depend on. Only at Chelan Wireless in downtown Chelan. 
Students looking for career and educational options have three chances to explore their future in the next month. The 2023 College and Career Expo visits three different locations around North Central Washington starting next week in Moses Lake. The Expos, coordinated by the North Central Educational Service District, are open to students in Grant, Okanagan, Chelan, and Douglas Counties. In tonight's feature story, Tammy McBride, the career-connected learning specialist with the district, says the free events are open to young people at all levels. Any and all like high school uh, students, college age students, any uh, young career explorer are able to come. Um, educators can bring groups of kids, a whole class grade if they wish, um, but this is uh, three days that they can choose from. They can go to one or all um, of the expos and um, just have a whole day of career exploration. Um, they have like colleges, universities, trades, um, businesses, organizations, like everything, you name it, they're there um, having hands-on activities and um, giving those uh, students career exploration to see what might be the next possible thing. We've been doing this for a while and it's exciting to, to take it to three locations again this year. Uh, last year, I think we saw just over 3,000 students across all three. Uh, we're expecting the same thing. Um, and uh, I think we had uh, over 100 exhibitors that were in attendance at, at each event. Uh, you know, just giving them exposure, and that's half the reason that we uh, provide the co college and career expos. It's giving them exposure and awareness of, you know, the possibilities of different career opportunities that are in their backyard that they don't necessarily might think about or know. Trades, colleges, and universities, they're all, um, you know, asked and, and they're all welcome to participate. So we try to get as many as possible from um, the state and to come collectively to, to all three. Um, they all look a little different. Um, so not everybody will be at this, like attendance at the same event um, at, across all three. So we try to get that. Um, they do look different, all three of them. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Weather-wise, boy, not bad at all. A beautiful start to our October 1st yesterday. Today, a little bit different story. A lot of dark clouds moved in around noontime and into our afternoon hours. There were scattered showers throughout North Central Washington. This view looking down at the Wenatchee Valley from our jump off rig Sky Fi Tower camera. You can see Wenatchee Heights right here in the middle of your screen, but yeah, yeah, lots of those dark clouds, and we'll show you where they came from coming up here in a little bit. But our five-day weather outlook, boy, does it look nice. As we get into Tuesday, we are seeing temperatures warming up. We should get into about 70-degree range in the Wenatchee area on Tuesday. By Wednesday, lower to mid-70s, Thursday, mid-70s, and we could see temperatures in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees Friday. And folks, the good news, it's going to continue right into the upcoming weekend, but it's kind of awesome because we lose a lot of temperature during the month of October. You can see that yesterday our normal high right around 72 degrees, but look what happens by the end of the month. Our normal high by Halloween, 54 degrees, and that's an 18 degree drop as we move through the month of October. So all these warm days coming up, definitely enjoy those. And here's our eight to 14 temperature outlook, slightly above normal for most of Washington state in that period, which goes to about October 12th or the 13th. But precipitation, it looks like we will be above normal uh, precipitation as we move in to the middle of October. All right, today's temperatures, I'll tell you, we got 65 when I made the, uh, where I did the stats for the Almanac, Almanac, but we did jump up to about 68 degrees late, late in the afternoon. 69 is where we should be, so pretty much a normal day here in North Central Washington. 52 was our low this morning. 47 is where we should be for a low temperature. Uh, 83, our record high, that was set in 1988. Record cold, not too long ago. 37 degrees, and that was set in 2019. Sunrise now 701, and the sun sets at 638. All right, your temperature. 
temperatures as we get into Tuesday. They will be warming up, as I mentioned. 69 in the Columbia Basin for Moses Lake and Afreda. 70 degrees for Quincy, also for Wenatchee. We'll see 70s for Eniat and Chelan. 69 in Kashmir and 68 the high temperature tomorrow in Leavenworth. So a nice day on the way. Tonight, high pressure continues to be our weather driver. Uh, we did see, as I mentioned, a weak cold front that is moving to the east. So we're still going to see some scattered showers maybe tonight. I think most of that will be in eastern Washington, while today most of the showers in southwestern part of the state. For Tuesday, all kinds of sunshine. We will be warmer. We mentioned it. High temperatures near 70. Maybe just a few lingering clouds along the Cascades, but all in all, it's going to be a nice day tomorrow and even better as we make our way through the work week. Sunshine on Wednesday. Still a few clouds in western Washington. We'll warm up into the low 70s as we get into midweek. For Thursday, even nicer. High pressure still in control and it's going to clear out all of the western United States. We're going to warm up into those mid 70s as we get into Thursday afternoon and that warm up continues right into the end of the week for Friday. Sunshine, a ridge of high pressure over us going to be beautiful temperatures in the mid to upper 70s and then as we get into the upcoming weekend on Saturday same story sunny skies unseasonably warm we're talking highs in the upper 70s and then for the end of our forecast and the end of our weekend coming up on Sunday enjoy it our ridge of high pressure will be up and over us it's still going to be warm with high temperatures near 80 but it looks like past Sunday into next week that large area of low pressure will affect our weather and we'll talk more about that as our week goes on overnight tonight 48 degrees for our low 70 tomorrow 73 Wednesday and 76 on Thursday and look what happens as we get into Friday and the weekend even warmer we're going to continue with all kinds of sunshine 77 the high Friday 78 Saturday and near 80 degrees as we get into Sunday and that's a look at your north central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life evening news continues right after this. Hi, this is Eric Granstrom, the NCW Live Channel Sports Director. While the teams are working hard, we're working hard to bring you 20 broadcasts this fall. Over the middle, the ball is caught, and just like that, gets through everybody. And it's Eastmont. Into the end zone, touchdown, Eastmont. It's Wenatchee. In five, touchdown. Even Kashmir. Killed by Mel, it's in. Good maneuver, red footer, go, 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 go. Right here on your local TV station, the NCW Live Channel. Well, the Mariners came up one game short of making the playoffs over the weekend, taking three of four from Texas, including a 1-0 win on Sunday. Seattle was officially eliminated from the playoffs Saturday after falling to the Rangers 6-1 and Houston beating Arizona 1-0. George Kirby had mop-up duty Sunday as he and three relievers combined on a four-hit shutout as the Mariners finished the season on a winning note. George Kirby going to make the start, his 30th start of the year, 12 game winner, a 3.46 ERA. Had a really nice year for the Mariners this year, 184 and two thirds, 165 strikeouts over just 19 walks. As George goes a one, two, three first inning. Nice punch out right there by George, back to back strikeouts for him. Two down, second strikeout. Just good fastball, EQC Tracer, that's a sinker runner, 99 miles an hour. George feels pretty good today. Swing and a miss. I'm telling you, <laughs> his first three half innings have been a blink. Seeger down on strikes. George's fourth strikeout, one out, fourth inning. 
High strike right there. Strikes out Garbert. 0 1 from Perez. Broken bat. That stays fair. You're going to come home, need a tag. Safe. Perez have a run. Pretty good play by Lowe, the first baseman. Looked like the ball was going to get there in plenty of time. But Hyde, the catcher, just never really tagged him. Missed him the first time. That's how he was able to get his foot on the yep. plate. Mariners take it. Absolutely. RBI for Dom. 21st and five for the ball game. Swing and a miss. Battle back from down 3 0. The breaking ball gets Carter. Strikeout number six for George. Strike three called. He dots him up. 96 mile an hour heater on the lower inside corner. Simeon flips his bat. Not pleased. That was a strike. Seventh strikeout for Kirby. Lohas right there as he flipped the first. Rangers are gone in the six. One, two, three, one, nothing. Mariners. Which we are not rooting for. Popped it up. Ken zone with room. Here he comes, here he comes, and the Mariners win game 162. Seattle finishes the season 88 and 74, good enough for third in the American League West by taking three of four from Texas. Mariners prevented the Rangers from winning the AL West title that went to Houston after the Astros swept the Diamondbacks. Texas did earn the second AL wildcard playoff spot behind Tampa Bay and in front of Toronto. Here's a look at the final wildcard standings in the American League. Uh, Seattle finishes just a game behind Toronto for that final playoff spot. Major League Baseball playoffs will begin tomorrow. In the American League, Texas plays at Tampa Bay at 12.05 on ABC. Toronto visits Minnesota for Game 1 at 1.38 on ESPN. Later in the day are the National League wildcard games, where Milwaukee hosts Arizona at 4.08 on ESPN2. Miami plays at Philadelphia at 5.08 on ESPN. While the Seahawks are in New York preparing for Monday Night Football tonight, uh, the rest of the NFC West was in action yesterday. Rams needed a 22-yard touchdown pass in overtime for Matthew Stafford to Puka Nakua to beat the Colts 29-23. San Francisco remained undefeated with a 35-16 win over the uh, Cardinals. Tonight's game at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey makes a return for Seahawks safety Jamal Adams. He tore his quadriceps muscle against the Broncos in the opening game over a year ago, he says it was a hard pill to swallow. Just being on the football field, you know, if you're not hurt, get up. You know what I mean? And, and that was always my mindset, like, try to get off the field, try to get off the field. Um, but again, I was, I was in denial. It just happened so quick, so soon. Um, wasn't prepared for it. Um, obviously was, you know, going through my other injuries of, of you know, the fingers and the shoulders and whatnot. Um, you know, when I did tear it, it was just, I had to figure out a way to get off the field. Um, I managed to do it just based off adrenaline. Um, but it was more so just denial, man. I didn't want to get on that car. I didn't, I didn't want to see everybody, you know, just stopping and clapping for me as I go off. And I didn't want that. I just wanted the game to continue. And, you know, obviously I knew what time it was as far as myself. Um, and, you know, going back into the locker room, that was seeing my family. That's where, you know, it was a tough time. Coach Pete Carroll says he's seen an emotional change in Adams as he's worked very hard to get back for tonight's game. It's pretty deep now. This guy, he's got tremendous passion for the game, and so all of it's important to him. There's nothing that isn't, and it's like he's talking about, and, and, uh, and he's really a good observer, and he's paying attention to what's happening. And he's, he's, you know, there, there's a lot going on coming back after all he's been through, and, and so uh, he's really – Doing a nice job of kind of, you know, kind of see, seeming like he's keeping it kind of on a low burn right now to, to manage it. And uh, um, so I'm, I'm proud of the way he's handled this so far. And he's going to do a nice job. Seattle and New York are underway on ESPN and ABC. It's the first time this season NFL has only one game on Monday Night Football. Well, checking the Les Schwab College football scoreboard from Saturday, Idaho edged Eastern Washington and Cheney 44-36. Central Washington traveled well at New Mex uh, Western New Mexico, coming away with a 55-17 win. Seventh-ranked Washington had its hands full in the desert, barely hanging on to beat Arizona 31-24. Coach Kalen DeBoer says the Wildcats played well and kept the ball away from the Huskies. First half with limited possessions, and so the game got shortened. Um, some opportunities in the second half for us, uh, for sure, to uh, put the game away. Um, disappointed in that, for sure. Um, you know, just a turnover inside the 10, 
and uh, you know uh, some penalties there, uh, holding call um, inside the five. Uh, so uh, got to be better there. Um, had opportunities to, to I think not put the game away, but change uh, the, di- the 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 flow of the game and uh, what the score was there, especially in the last 10, 12 minutes. So um, a lot of things to learn from, but I know that winning uh, winning games uh, is not easy on the road, and uh, especially in our conference. Um, and uh, you know we'll take the win, five and zero. With a bye week, uh, we're right where we want to be. Washington is five and zero headed into the bye. Washington State had a bye last weekend as well. Eastmont had to recover from a first quarter deficit to win in Big Nine football on Friday night. The Wildcats trailed at Sunnyside 14-0 before coming back to win it 28-21. Gunnar Peterson set the tone with 180 yards rushing and a touchdown. Landon Moore also ripped off a 63-yard touchdown run to help Eastmont improve to 5-0. Wenatchee jumped out to a 14-7 lead over Moses Lake Friday night at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl, but the Mavericks converted two touchdowns before half and went on for a 35-14 victory. In other Big Nine action, Ike beat Davis 20-11. West Valley topped Hermiston 14-12. Cashmere eclipsed Efreda in a non-league game tilt on Friday 41-6. Other CWAC plays saw Sela top East Valley. Prosser edged Ellensburg. Othello blanked Grandview. Quincy shut out Cascade and Caribou Trail League play 34-0. OMAC crushed Chelan 60-20. B football on Friday saw Okanagan remain unbeaten with a 45-14 win over Pullman. Brewster beat Lake Roosevelt 19-6. Manson topped today. Ask at 49-8. Waterville Mansfield took down Eddie at 62-32. Bridgeport bettered Pateras 38-18. Silk Lake shut out Orville 28-0. Girls soccer over the weekend. Mount Vernon Christian shut out Okanagan Friday 3-0. On Saturday, Eastmont edged West Valley 3-2. Wenatchee topped Moses Lake 5-1. Grandview edged Efreda 3-2. Omak topped Manson 2-1. Tanaska and Mount Vernon Christian played to a 3-all tie. Liberty Bell edged Lake Roosevelt 3-2. On volleyball courts, Waterville Mansfield beat any at Friday 3-1 on Saturday, Cashmere and Cascade swept East Valley and then split with Natchez Valley. Cashmere coming away with a 3-0 sweep while the Rangers beat uh, Cascade 3-2. Waterville Mansfield pulled off a 3-2 win over Odessa. Almira Cooley Heartline swept three sets from Lake Roosevelt. NCW Life Channel will bring you prep volleyball tomorrow live here on the NCW Life Channel. Eastmont hosting the Davis Pirates. I'll be courtside with your play-by-play of the pregame just before 7 o'clock. Also on Friday, we'll be at Wildcats Stadium where Eastmont will host West Valley in Big Nine football. Grant Olson and Paul Collard will have the play-by-play with our pregame getting underway at 6.30 here on the NCW Life Channel. Well, it was a tough weekend for the Wenatchee Wild on the road. Everett came away with a 3-2 overtime win on Friday night. The Wild got goals from Kenta Osage and Graham Sward, while Daniel Hauser made 41 of 44 saves in goal. Wenatchee got out to an early lead on Saturday in Kelowna, but saw the Rockets rebound for a 5-3 win. Easton Armstrong, Rodgers Bukarts, and Evan Friesen each uh, found the back of the net for Wenatchee. On Sunday, Vancouver recovered from an early deficit to beat Wenatchee 6-2. Jonas Wu and Graham Sward were the goal scorers for the Wild. Wenatchee back on the road this Friday and Saturday in Prince George and Kamloops on Sunday. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Granstrom. Have a happy Monday. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up Anachi Valley. It's Wake Up Anachi Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Live channel.